And Naaman, my servant, I want him healed. <laughs> and the king in Israel says, oh my goodness, man, he's start, starting to fight with us. Yes. He knows we can't heal him. We can't, you know. But Elijah, a man or Elisha, I don't remember which was the prophet at that time, but he sends a note to the king and says, is there not a prophet in Israel? Yes. Tell Naaman to come by me. Yes, amen. amen. Because of a little girl's faith. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Faith. It's an amazing Jesus. thing that God has given to us. And I want to talk to us a little bit about a mother's faith today. Because you see, God has placed faith within mothers. And in the Bible, we have some amazing examples of this. And uh, because of that faith, amen, we're here today. Amen. We are here today. Amen. You see, uh, it takes faith to have children. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm not on the woman's side of this thing, but uh, I do know that if you go back into the 1800s, there were a lot of mothers that died in childbirth. It was not a thing to be taken lightly. Amen. It takes faith to have children. Amen. And there can be serious complications. But I believe that God has placed a faith in women. Amen. That makes them mothers and makes them amazing. And I want to start out in the book of Proverbs chapter 31. And I want to read to us verses 29 through 31 as we open up into this Mother's Day. As we celebrate our moms and what God has done through them. Amen. Proverbs 31 and verse 29. Give you just a moment to get there. And this is Lemuel's mother has taught him these things he's the king and he's sharing what his mother passed on to him in verse 29 it says many daughters have done virtuously but thou excellest them all favor is deceitful and beauty is vain or empty but a woman that fears the lord she shall be praised give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates in other words a woman of faith that trusts in the lord God's going to bless. God's going to do great things through them. Amen. Faith is so vital in the world that we live in. And so many times in families, it is the mother that has the faith. Now, there are times that men have been great leaders in their families, and they have get, had great faith, and they have led their families. But uh, I do know there are many times that children went to Sunday school, and it wasn't because of the dads. It was because of the moms. Amen. Of course, I realize a few of them got sent off to Sunday school just so they could get them out of their hair. Uh, I'm sure that there's a little bit of uh, wisdom in that, too. Amen. Uh, but regardless, there are many that have had faith. And because of that, we can go into the Word of God and we get some incredible lessons on mothers of faith. And the Bible gives us some great examples of how their faith has changed the course of history. And how it has affected the world that we live in. Let's pray right now. Father, we thank you for this word. And I thank you for the faith that is placed within each of us. Every one of us has been given the gift of faith. And Lord, I pray that as we use that gift, you exploit it. You do great things through it. But surely our mothers, Lord, have had faith in us as well as they've had faith in you, God. And I thank you for that and ask you to allow it to be a seed that flourishes in our world today. The church said in Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. Let's go back to the book of Exodus. This is hard times for the children of Israel. They are in Egypt. They are slaves. They have multiplied so much that the Pharaoh has made a decree that the boy babies, male babies, are to be killed upon delivery because there's too many of them. And so here we find a mother that is in a very difficult place. And in Exodus chapter 1 and verse 15, Pharaoh makes the decree. It says in the king of Egypt. I'll give you just a second to get there. This is Exodus 1 and 15. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, uh, which the name of the one was Shapura and the name of the other Pura. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, see them with the stools, if it be a son, then thou shalt kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God. Thank God for that fear that is put within them. 
and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this thing? And saved the men children alive. And the midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass because the midwives feared God. You see, because I believe they were mothers also. Amen. I cannot imagine their position in life. For, for a, a woman like this to be a midwife and to help in the delivery of children, I would assume they would have to love children. <laughs> Amen. And they just couldn't do this. They could not do it. Amen. And as a result, God blessed them for this. And, uh, and so the command was made in verse 22. Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born you shall cast into the river. Every daughter you shall save alive. So, wow, this is when Moses is born. It's a very difficult time. And his mother has to make some tough calls. Chapter 2 and verse 1 says, There went a man of the house of Levi and took his wife, a daughter of Levi, and the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. So for three months, she hid him, nourished him. Uh, desperate to save his life, not wanting her child to die. And because of her faith, she's risking so much. Yes. And uh, it says in verse 3, when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes. She made a little basket that would float and uh, daubed it with slime, would pinch, put the child therein, laid it in the flags by the river's brink, and just let it go by faith. Amen. I'm talking about a mother's faith today. And uh, verse 4, and his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. Her maidens walked along by the river's side. When she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And the story continues on when the baby's drawn out. He cries. Pharaoh's daughter is touched by this. And it turns out that she cannot have children. Amen. Or she doesn't have children. Uh, and as far as I know in history, everything that we're reading has been proven. They have found evidence of this in Egypt concerning this story, even con concerning the midwife, Shapura. Her name is mentioned as a midwife. And so this is a very challenging time. And the Pharaoh at that time did not have a son. There are no mistakes in God's plan. Amen. Amen. God knows what he's doing. And so when we find ourselves in difficult times, no matter how impossible it is, we need faith. Amen. And Moses' mother needed faith. We don't hear anything about the father it's the mother that's doing things. She's the one that's hiding the baby. She's the one that's protecting the baby. And finally, she's the one who builds the little boat for him to float into the Nile and then turns him loose into the hands of fate or God. Amen. And God works it out to where Pharaoh's daughter takes him in. And uh, Miriam is able to get uh, the mother as a midwife or a, a surrogate mother to take care of Moses until he's old enough. No doubt she taught him what the Israelites were, the promises of God that were given to them. Because the Bible says that when Moses came of age as a man, that he thought that God was going to let him step up and take charge and deliver the Israelites. Of course, he tried to do it on his own. We can't do anything on our own. Amen. But the fact that Moses lives and we have his story and the wonderful work that God used to use him as a deliverer for the children of Israel out of Egypt is absolutely miraculous from the beginning. But if his mother had not have had faith, Moses would not have made it. Amen. Amen. And because of a mother's faith, it's amazing what God can do in yes. our lives. Yes, and we don't know what our mothers have to deal with or had to deal with for us to come into this world 
We don't know the sicknesses that we were nursed through. Uh, we do not know the times that they went sleepless, the times that they grieved and worried over us. Um, my mother, I was told, and I don't, I haven't been able to get any proof of this, but she had seven miscarriages before I was born, I was told. And the doctor told her after I was born that she couldn't have any more children, it would kill her. So I was it. <laughs> I was the pride and joy, and I was all that there was. Amen. There wasn't going to be anything else. And I don't know what she sacrificed up to that point to try to have me. Amen. But I know this, that because of her faith, her desire for a child, I'm here today. Yes. Amen. And, uh, and I do believe that took a lot of faith on her part. Um, and just trusting that somehow that it would work out. And I do believe that she probably had no idea that I'd become a preacher. That was the last thing that I'm sure that she was expecting. And unfortunately, she had been hurt very badly by the church, not necessarily by God, but by the church. And as a result, uh, she felt like the church robbed me from her. <laughs> Amen. Because I got involved with this cult, you know, these... These, these Pentecostals, they're, they're snake handlers and they're all kinds of crazy people and, and uh, they're a cult, right? And uh, no, we're not. <laughs> amen. There's all kinds of stories. It's crazy. But uh, amen. We have witnessed a lot of miracles. Yes. God has done some incredibly wonderful things that are amazing and has allowed yes. us to flourish as a uh, body of believers. Amen. Apostolics. Uh, Pentecostals, whatever you want to call us, amen. We have dedicated our lives to God, and as a result, God has blessed us and is using us in the world today. And as a religion goes, if you want to call it a religion, uh, we are growing better than anybody else is, thank the Lord. And that is because of the miraculous way that God works through the church, the lives that are touched, the miracles that happen, when a newborn believer receives the infilling of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it's evidence with the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues. This is supernatural. This is a God thing. Amen. And uh, it establishes us in our walk as we begin to serve him and walk in faith. But Moses' mother, if it had not been for her faith and going to the absolute limits of what she could do, we would not know about Moses. And God would have had to use somebody else to deliver Israel. Amen. Amen. And interestingly enough, Moses was raised in the palace. And my first pastor used to say that while Pharaoh was bouncing him on his knee, scratching under his chin, going, get you, get you, you. Moses was saying, I'm going to get you, get you, you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't think that Moses was thinking that, but uh, nonetheless, it's cute. Because... <laughs> uh, Moses, no doubt, caused some problems for Pharaoh. <laughs> Amen. Because he wound up leading all of God's people out of Egypt and literally bankrupting Egypt because everything they were doing and everything they was building was being built by the backs of the Israelites. Amen. And when the time came, God delivered them. And so what an incredible story of a mother's faith. Amen. But there's other mothers in there that are absolutely as awesome. Let's go to 1 Samuel, <coughs> chapter 1, verse 1. And we'll read it about another amazing mother. And we will notice in these readings that these mothers face difficult times. Yes. I'm sorry to tell you this, but living for God, we're going to face some difficult times. Yes. But if we will place our faith in God, yes, amen. he will do the miraculous. That's his job. Just as Naaman was told by a little slave girl, was told about the prophet in Israel, and he was healed, it's going to take faith. And many times that will come out of our distress or our struggles. And in 1 Samuel... The story is told, we'll read in verse 1. Now, there was a certain man of Ramathaim, Zopim, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, and the son of Jerohoam, 
the uh, son of Elihu, and the son of Tohu, and the son of Zippu, and, uh, and Ephra Ephraim. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Peniah. Peniah had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Peniah his wife and to his sons and his daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb. It's so important that we have faith. But I believe that it's so important that mothers have faith. Because many times mothers will pray prayers Mothers are in a much more helpless position than the fathers. Many times the fathers can run off to work and take care of business and be busy, you know, chasing goats or whatever we have to do for a living. And uh, that kind of takes our mind off of the home. But when we've got children at home and uh, a wife at home that is struggling, and of course in this case we've got a wife who cannot bear children. And... Uh, and uh, it's, it's disturbing because he really loved Hannah. He wanted her to be blessed, but the Bible says that God shut up her womb. So what did she do? Did she give up and just throw in the towel and say, <laughs> No. The Bible says that when she went to make their sacrifices in the temple, that she went and prayed. And she sought the Lord. Amen. And in that situation, she is so sincere, she is so earnest in seeking the Lord that when Eli, the old man of God, sees her, he thinks she's drunk because she is mouthing out words, but she's not speaking out loud. But she's really in great sorrow and she's really pleading with God because she knows that God can open her womb up. Amen. God can do anything. And we know now that this must have been the plan of the Lord because he knew that Hannah had faith. Yes. Amen. This is why it's so important, amen, that moms have faith. And this faith, I, we are living in a culture today that is so bizarre because there are women that are not wanting to be moms. They're wanting to be men. And that absolutely blows my mind. Because uh, there are no men that are going to be having any babies. Amen. So if that happens, if somehow culture just decides that all the men are going to be women and the women are going to be men, that's going to be the end of the program, y'all. Yes. It just stops right there. Uh, that's, uh, you know, that's just plain old common sense. But uh, I don't know. Uh, I know it's a life in the devil. I know that Satan is causing confusion. I know that in this last day that we live in, that there is so much corrupt information being put out there, so many distractions for our minds, and Satan's desire is, is that we would quit having faith in God. So to all the moms that have faith in God, hang in there. Yes. Amen. God's still faithful. God has always been faithful. Yes, this is why we need the Word of God. This is why you need to read the Word of yes. God. Because there is no other information out there in this world today that is consistent. It's just not out there. I don't know of any other source of information that you can go to. And it's always been saying the same thing. But the word of God has never changed. And it will never change. And God will never change. And so to the moms that have faith in God. And trust in the word of God. It's all going to work out. And because of Hannah's faith in God. And her prayer. Eli says, well, God grant you your petition then. Amen. You're sincere. And sure enough, by that time the next year, she's pregnant. And she has Samuel. And we happen to know through history that Samuel is one of the greatest prophets yes, that God raised up. Yes. Amen. And it's absolutely amazing. And he was not from the seed of Levi, which you'd think all the great prophets came out of Levi. No, huh? this is Amen. A prophet that is born because of a mother's faith. And she dedicates him to the Lord before she ever conceived him. She said, God, if you'll give me a man child, I will dedicate him to you. 
And she does that. She brings him up to the temple and drops him off. And he winds up serving Eli. And Eli's sons, unfortunately, Hophni and Phinehas, they become absolute rebels. They are reprobate. They are horrible. And they are defiling the priesthood. And they are doing everything wrong. But Samuel, amen, is faithful and serves Eli. And as a result, God prepares his heart to become one of the greatest prophets that Israel has ever known. Now, you have two here that have been born and should not have been born. Moses should never have existed. But because of a mother's faith, amen, he becomes the meekest man, the Bible says, that has ever lived. He was the most obedient to God. He did what God wanted. Amen. And he has such a testimony with God. And then you have Samuel, who was not supposed to be born, but because of his mother's faith and trust in God, we see that God does the miraculous, and we have one of the greatest prophets that has ever existed. And I find this absolutely awesome, the word of God. Amen. What an incredible story of how a mother's faith can touch others. Another story of a mother's faith that touches others is the book of Ruth, which is right before Samuel. In the book of Ruth, Naomi is a Jewish woman that is moved to Moab because of her husband, because there's a famine in the land of Israel, and they leave Israel and go to Moab to survive. And while she's there, her sons marry Moabite women, which is against God's word, but they do it anyway. And uh, in that time that they live there in Moab, both her sons and her husband die. And Naomi is in an incredibly bitter place because all she had is God. And in her influence, you see, a mother has amazing influence. Um, there's something about a mother's love. Uh, because she interacted with her daughters-in-law, uh, Ruth and um, Oprah, um, Oprah was not as connected as Ruth was, but Ruth fell in love, not just with Naomi, but with Naomi's God. Because you see, Naomi was a mother of faith. She loved God. She trusted God. And as a result, we see that Ruth, even though she's a Moabite woman, dedicates herself to be faithful to Naomi. And when Naomi says she's moving back to Israel, Ruth says, I'm going with you and whatever it takes, however it works, whatever. Amen. This is because of Naomi's faith. And Naomi's family would have ceased at this time because all her, all her seed is dead. All the men are gone. But Ruth winds up, God works a miracle, winds up marrying Boaz, which is a near kinsman to Naomi. And because of this, their seed continues on. And Naomi winds up raising grandbabies. And uh, Ruth becomes an absolutely amazing woman of God, full of faith. But it's because of Naomi. Amen. God, I believe, knew all of this before they moved to Moab. And I really wonder if God did not move them to, to Moab because he realized how much faith that Ruth had and how much that Ruth wanted to serve God. And he sent perhaps one of the best people he could out of Israel, and that was Naomi. But Naomi lost everything, it seemed like. It seemed like it was the end of the world for her. And sometimes for moms, there are difficult things that they have to face. There are things they have to go through that nobody should have to go through. But if you've got faith, I promise you it will not be in vain. If you trust in the Lord, God will turn good out of that. I don't know how he does it. I just know that he does. Amen. And so all of these mothers in the Bible teach us to trust in God, to have faith in God. Amen. And as a result... Ruth winds up being a great-great-grandma of King David. <laughs> Amen. She's not just a child of God. She becomes a part of the lineage of King David, which Christ comes out of the lineage of David. 
So God handpicked these people. Amen. And I do believe that it was because of their faith. And on this Mother's Day, we want to honor our moms because there are so many times they sacrificed, so many times that they prayed, so many things that they did that have benefited others around them. Amen. And I will be honest with you, I have been adopted many times, and I thank God for it. Amen. Uh, I have had many moms. Uh, my biological mom was amazing. I love her. I wish a million times over that I would have done more for her and, uh, and uh, somehow been closer to her uh, because I had no clue. I'm a typical male. Uh, I just, I don't seem to understand how important anything is until it's gone. And, uh, and now that my mother is gone, I realize that I was the apple of her eye and that I just kind of got snagged away from her and disappeared. And I was all she had to look forward to in life. Amen. Um, she turned to alcohol and, uh, and it wound up killing her. Amen. She had nothing else up in the mountains there. Uh, she had my dad. Uh, and he was a good man, but alcohol ruled in our household. And so there was a lot of misery and a lot of suffering because of that. But I know that I was so very important to her. And, uh, and so as I look back, I wish that I had been more to her. But I will say this, especially in the church, uh, but even outside the church, I have had uh, special women that have just, uh, they've opened up their homes, their hearts to me. They've treated me as a son. And, uh, and I've honored them as a son. I, I, I value them so very, very much. And I believe God put them in my life to help me, to encourage me, uh, and to allow me to be a blessing to them. Uh, I do not believe that uh, moms are all this thing revolves around. Because moms need support. They need encouragement. They need prayer. They need kind words. They need some flowers. You know, there's nothing... That will, that will light up a mom's face more than get some flowers from a little kid. Uh, it just, you know, it's just the way that God's made them. Amen. And, uh, and that is an incredible gift that we can give back to them. And, uh, and so we honor our moms today. We are so thankful for you and the sacrifices, the nights that you stay up taking care of sick babies. Uh, I have experienced that just a little bit, and I almost went crazy. Uh, if there's anything that will drive you crazy is being sleep deprived night after night after night after night trying to take care of a baby that cannot take care of themselves. And you lay them down and you think, oh, they're finally going to go to sleep. And you just barely drop off to sleep and, and they're back at it again. And you are absolutely out of your mind. Amen. And I'm telling you, it takes faith. It takes a lot of love. And, uh, and there are many babies that have been hurt because of this. Because the baby doesn't know what's going on and the mama loses it. And unfortunately, there are children that have been abused because of that. And uh, that is a very hard time in a life of a mom. Amen. And, uh, and many of us do not realize that the only reason we're here is because our mamas didn't take us out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, uh, and they could have, and they might should have, you know, I don't know, you know, some of us could be pretty tough, uh, uh, we could be pretty tough, and then some of us we can't help it, you know, we're just, we are what we are, and uh, some babies are sickly, and some babies uh, are ornery, and some babies are, you know, and, you know, but uh, it's, there's something about a mama, she can love anything, I've heard the statement made, that's a face only a mama can love, <laughs> you know, one person looks at that baby and says, Whoo, that's a baby. <laughs> you know, and then mama looks at it and says, Oh, that's so cute. And you're like, Well, what? I don't see cute anywhere about that, but <laughs> amen. Mama, she can see that cute. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, I will say this we change a lot as we grow. And I think sometimes that the mamas can see what nobody else can see. And I believe that's faith. Amen. Uh, there is so much that is planted in us because of our mothers and because of the many mothers that God allows to intervene in our lives because they care about us and they pray for us. And I believe that uh, there are mothers that can't have children or are praying for other children. Amen. And praying for others. 
and uh, so yeah uh, it's an amazing world that we live in we find the widow of Zarephath <laughs> is a story there is a famine in Israel uh, because Israel is backslid the prophet has been told to pray for famine and there's no rain no food everybody's dying and God sends Elijah to the widow of Zarephath to sustain him and when he comes into town there she is out gathering sticks and he says could you get me a little to drink and fix me just a little morsel of bread she said of a truth she said I'm gathering up a handful of sticks I got one handful of meal and uh, I'm going to cook that, make one little cake. My son and I are going to split it, and we're going to die. It's all we got to eat. And he says, make first for me, and then God will provide or sustain you. And she has enough faith to trust God for that. Amen. The last of the food that she has, she gives it to this stranger who claims to be a prophet of God. And when she does that, the Bible says that the meal never ran out and the oil never disappeared. And they ate through the remainder of that famine for, for a couple of years. Amen. God provided for them miraculously. And uh, this boy didn't die. Why? Because his mom's faith. Yes. She had faith. She trusted in the Lord. And so... Trusting in the Lord is not a small thing. It's an incredibly great thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention just, just a couple more here as we, as we wind this down. One of my favorites is the Shunammite woman. And the Bible says that Elisha, I believe it was, and his servant would travel through the land. And they would go by the Shunammite's house. And she saw them and she got to thinking, you know, they look like he's a prophet. Talked her husband into building a little house on the wall. And, uh, and a place for him to stay. And Elisha stays there. And uh, she provides for him while he's there. And eventually, uh, Elisha prays for her to have a son. Because she can't have children. And, uh, and God gives her a son. And lo and behold, down the road, that son gets sick. And the Shunammite woman races off to see the man of God. And uh, pleads with him. Amen. And the man of God goes back and God uses him to bring this child back to life. And uh, when she got to Elisha, well, first of all, Elisha sent his servant to talk to her. And the, when she talked to the servant, the servant said, is all well with you? Yeah, everything well with your son? Yeah, everything's well. And, uh, but when she got to Elisha, she fell at his feet and, and Elisha knew everything was not well. Well, her son had died. And was laying on his bed back at the house. And they go back and God allows him to resurrect that boy. Amen. That Shunammite woman's faith is amazing. A famine comes through the land and the prophet tells her to take her family. Y'all need to pack up and go somewhere else for a while. Because of her faith they do that. Amen. And when they come back into the land after the famine has subsided... It's very interesting because the servant of the man of God is sitting talking to the king and telling him about the wonderful miracles that Elisha has done. And lo and behold, it's at the exact same time that the Shunammite woman shows up wanting to get her property back. Amen. And the servant of the man of God says to the king, well, this is the Shunammite woman. She's the one that Elisha raised her son from the dead. And at that moment... The king grants her her property back. Everything that had been produced on that property, God does so much for her. Now, why does God have this story in the Bible? I believe because it shows us her faith and how that God will honor your faithfulness. And just because you're a woman, you're no less than a man. Amen. You have your position in this world just like men have their position in this world. God has put us all here together. We need each other. Yes, amen. amen. And a mother's faith is absolutely amazing. And God has always honored a mother's faith. He will always honor a mother's faith. And I don't doubt that many of us are here today because of our mother's faith. Amen. amen. Now, maybe they were not the most faithful to church. I don't know. But I believe that they had to trust that somehow God was going to work miracles through their lives and through their families. 
The last one I want to mention is Rahab. Rahab is in Jericho. The city of Jericho is one of the first cities that the Israelites conquer when they come into the promised land. <coughs> Rahab has heard about the Israelites crossing the Red Sea. And she knows that God is going to allow them to conquer everything. Because it's obvious if they cross the Red Sea and defeat Pharaoh, and nobody's going to stand in their way. And so when the spies come into the city to check out Jericho, she hides them, she protects them, and makes them promise that they will spare her and her family. Amen. And I just, I find it so amazing that because of her love for her family and her faith in God, that God protected her. They're the only ones that survived out of Jericho, her and her family. And it was because of her faith. So our mother's faith is so vital to us. And I know that some of you are here. The only reason you're here today is because of your mother's faith. Amen. Uh, God is the one who brings all this about. I believe he plants seeds in us through that. And, uh, and so there are so many stories in the Bible. And Rahab winds up becoming uh, a great-grandmother to David. <laughs> you know? So these women were really special to God because they trusted in the Lord. And so it's not a light thing. And, and maybe you don't know a lot about the Lord, but I can tell you right now, if you have faith in him and you trust him, God will use you. He will bless your family. He will take care of you when nobody else can. My wife's mom is a great example of this. While her husband was off working and taking care of the family and his the best of his ability, she was at home praying and believing God, and God was providing and working miracles and taking care of their family. And I've heard many testimonies of uh, they would go to the grocery store. There was little giveaways that they would give at the grocery store in a little community they lived in. And how many times that they won that giveaway? <laughs> Amen. And it was because of a praying mom. Yes, and so as we stand to our feet today and we give honor to our mothers, uh, I thank God for what he has created. And the Bible says in the beginning, God created them male and female, man and woman. And through that union, God has created the church and the church is a family. And we are a beautiful place here today. And we are so thankful for what God has instilled in us. And so please honor your mothers the best you can. And uh, the Bible does say honor your father and your mother and God will bless you with a long life. Yes. I realize sometimes they're not perfect. And uh, as you get a little bit older, you're going to find out you're not either. And uh, we're, we're doing the best we can, aren't we? Yeah. And I'm so glad God works with that. You know that? I am so glad that God works with that. Thank you so much, Sister Joanne. She just reminded me of the offering. Amen. Uh, Brother James, would you do us the honor and take up the offering here and give these good folks an opportunity to give? <laughs> Uh, we're a little bit out of out of our normal routine. Lord, thank you for this offering, for the gift and the giver. We pray your blessings upon each. In Jesus' name, amen. We give you just a uh, quick opportunity. <laughs> and uh, I rejoice in the kindness of life. And I know that many times that has come through moms, people that have loved and cherished and cared about me. And uh, I've had... I've had people that have opened up their refrigerators to me, and as a young man, that's absolutely priceless. They've opened up their homes and, uh, and their hearts, and I thank God for that. Well, let's be dismissed in prayer. Father, we are so thankful for your hand of provision, for your blessings, for each one of your servants. We ask you to bless our moms today and let them be encouraged as we are reminded of your goodness through them. In Jesus' name, and somebody said amen. amen. God bless you all.